A tragic fire broke out in a man's home in Charlotte County, Florida. The fire started in the garage after recent storm surge flooded the home. The cause of the fire? A golf cart powered by lithium-ion batteries. Sadly, the homeowner lost his life. When firefighters arrived, they saw this man trying to fight the fire himself. Moments later, as they stepped off the truck, he collapsed, and despite their best efforts, he passed away at the hospital. This is a devastating situation, and sadly, it's something we see far too often in the fire service. The Charlotte County Fire and EMS had their hands full after Hurricane Helene hit. In the two days following the storm, they responded to 60 rescues and 26 different fires. Many of these fires were linked to storm-related damage, including incidents like this one, where submerged lithium-ion batteries played a role. I truly understand the instinct to try to save your home when that fire breaks out. Standing by and doing nothing, it feels impossible. Time stands still while you wait for first responders to arrive. You think you can grab the garden hose, control the flames, but unfortunately, that decision can be deadly. And there's a few reasons why. First, let's talk about the risk of trying to fight the fire yourself. You don't have protection from the heat, and without proper protective gear, the intense radiant heat, it can cause serious burns within seconds. But even more dangerous is the smoke. Smoke inhalation is the leading cause of death in fire. The stress on your body combined with the physical effort, that can also put you at risk of heart attack, especially for older individuals and those with underlying health conditions. Now let's talk about the storm surge itself and lithium ion batteries. This is something so many people don't realize. When batteries, like those in electric vehicles, e-bikes, e-scooters, or even golf carts, when they're submerged, especially in salt water, they can become ticking time bombs. Salt water accelerates the corrosion inside the battery, leading to internal short circuits. That can cause the battery to ignite, go into thermal runaway. What's even scarier is these fires can happen hours or even days after the water exposure. If you've got any kind of electric vehicle or lithium powered device that's been submerged, here's what you need to do. Stay away from that vehicle or device. Don't turn it on, don't charge it, don't try to use it. The risk is very real, and it's not something you can predict just by looking at the vehicle or looking at the battery. Contact a professional, reach out to the manufacturer or certified technician to have the battery inspected. After an inspection, they should be able to tell you if that battery is safe to use or if it needs to be replaced. Watch out for warning signs. If you see any signs of smoke, strange smells, or heat coming from the vehicle or from that battery, call 911 immediately. Don't try to extinguish it. Don't try to move it yourself. Just let the professionals handle it. And speaking of prevention, I want to talk about Hurricane Milton. It appears to be growing and is looking like it's gonna hit the same exact area that's still trying to recover from Hurricane Helene. For those of you with electric vehicles or lithium powered devices, now is the time to prepare. First and foremost, never drive through flooded water with an electric vehicle. Water infiltration can cause the batteries to fail and go into thermal runaway, leading to a fire. If you're evacuating and leaving an electric vehicle behind, Make sure you park that vehicle outside and keep it away from your house, ideally 50 feet away from any exposures like your home, garage, or other structures. This way, if a fire does start, it won't spread to the rest of your property. Recently, I've seen reports that cities like Tampa are offering free parking and parking garages as Hurricane Milton approaches, specifically to get electric vehicles to higher elevations, to reduce that risk of exposure to the storm surge. So those of you that live in low-lying areas, you should get those vehicles up into those parking garages. That way those vehicles don't become submerged and that will reduce the risk. For smaller devices like e-bikes, e-scooters, or even backup battery systems, keep them high and away from potential storm surge. Elevating them above flood levels will reduce the risk of water damage and help prevent fires from occurring once that storm passes. Storms like Hurricane Helene and Hurricane Milton, they're becoming more common. And with the rise of electric vehicles and micromobility devices, this is an issue more people need to be aware of. Fires caused by lithium-ion batteries are pretty challenging to fight. A garden hose, it just won't cut it. Let me put things into perspective. A typical garden hose flows about 10 gallons per minute, right around 50 PSI. That's nothing compared to the typical water we use when we fight a fire. As an example, when we pull a hand line out, an inch and three quarter hand line, it flows about 200 gallons a minute at 125 PSI. That's the kind of water you need to control a fire at this scale, especially when lithium ion batteries are involved. So I urge you, if your house catches on fire, don't try to be a hero. Your life is worth more than your belongings. Just take a step back, get yourself, get your family to safety, call the fire department, let us do our job. And trust me, we're equipped to handle it.